All right, so we're on the field. And uh, yeah, we are the Buffalo Steel and we're playing against the Chicago Blues. We're on superstar mode and we want to go through some things. So one of the things that is kind of new in the latest builds is how the injuries work. In the past, we weren't getting that many injuries, but if you've been playing the game, you're gonna see a lot more injuries now. And those injuries are, they're more frequent, but they're also less um, critical. So you're gonna see them a lot more, but don't panic because they're usually gonna be one to two week um, injuries. So that's kind of new. Another thing that's somewhat new are the fumble changes that we've made. Just wanna remind everybody that QBs, when you're running the ball with the QB, they have a higher likelihood of fumbling. You can hold down the charge button to kind of slow down a little bit, but you're gonna secure the ball better. And that gives you a higher chance of keeping the ball in your hands. So keep that in mind when you guys are playing and uh, hopefully that helps you out with the running the QB. It's also part of it. It's also just to, just to kind of balance the people that keep running the ball with really fast QBs. And speaking of like speed and stuff, ratings matter in this game a lot. So depending on how your ratings are set, or if you think the game's playing too fast or too slow, or you see things that are way off, I know people are complaining at times about the difficulty levels. We've added more difficulty levels in the game. And I know people want even more. They want sliders. They want things that um, other games have, like AAA games. And we could do something like that, but it's just... There are too many difficulties in the game already. And if it were up to me, I would just have no difficulty. And here's the game, make the game the best for that exact difficulty, and then let the players play. But one of the things that we wanted to do with this game was to make sure that the matchups matter. So you couldn't play the best team versus the worst team and feel like you're playing the same game as playing with the opposite teams, right? You wanna make sure that, I wanted to make sure that the gameplay on the field was representative of the actual stats. So if you have any problems with the sliders or the, we don't have sliders, if you have any problems with the difficulty levels and you want more fine tuning or you wanna be able to tweak the running or the passing or the tackling or whatever it might be, the kicking, do what you can with the difficulty meet, the difficulty options, but then go into the rosters and I know it takes a lot of work, but you can go in there and you can fine tune things. So you can bump down the skill levels for certain players. Like if the defense is too power heavy, bump down their skill level. There's things that you can do to tweak. I've done a lot of modding in games, a lot of rosters in my previous um, years and there's a lot, believe me, there's a lot you can do with the ratings. So don't panic. And remember, the game is based off of the player ratings more than you probably would think. So for people that jump in and play one, one game on one difficulty, you're getting this much of the game. You have no basis of judging the game or being able to really get a good idea of what the game can do until you've played multiple games and until you have played with different matchups, different difficulty levels, et cetera. Um, Couple other things with the QB. The QB has other settings on here, like mobile QB, which when you have that turned on, you have to have um, a certain rating, skill rating for you to be able to kind of see more of the field. So depending on what your skill rating is, it's uh, you're gonna see the entire field. So if you're at a 90 skill or greater, you're gonna be able to see the entire field. So when you hike the ball and the ball goes back, like we'll do one here just for fun. Go ahead and just see what we can get here. We're a 75 skill. So at a 75 skill, we're only gonna get about 15 yards or so of view and then it caps out. See that from the line of scrimmage. So I believe, I believe it's the line of scrimmage, but I'm gonna double check now because I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. So you're only gonna be able to see, you can go back as far as you want, but you're only gonna be able to see as far as that distance, as no matter how far back you go. And that's the way that it works. So we have different tiers. Anybody who's a 90 or above can see the entire field. Anybody who's 80 or above can see like 
I don't know, like 20 yards, 25 yards, whatever it is. And then 70, and it starts to stagger down. That was a request by somebody out there. We put it in the game, done. Another thing that we have, that's that's QB vision, by the way, not mobile QB. Mobile QB is if players are going to get penalized if they're not a mobile QB. And we can look in here what we have. We don't have any mobile QBs on our team. They don't as well. But I think if your speed is let's see oh, we're on halfback i think if you're an 85 or greater you get the mobile qb icon and you'll see it uh, in the picture and if you have the mobile qb setting turned on then when you have a player who's an 85 speed or better they're not going to get penalized if they're or not as much if they're running while they're throwing so it's very critical if you're seeing a lot of inaccurate passes, it's probably you, that you have the mobile, mobile QB setting on and your guy's not a QB. So if we try to do a pass and we're not a mobile QB right now, our guy is a 75. So if I'm trying to do a pass while I'm moving, I got sacked, but if you're trying to move, do a pass while you're moving, then you have to make sure that, uh, that you that you stand still. So if you're throwing the same direction, by the way, if you're throwing the same direction as you're moving, just like in real life, you don't get as bad of a penalty. You're still going to get one. But if I go to the right and I throw the left, see, I threw a duck because I'm moving to the right and trying to throw across my body. That is a that is not going to work well in this game. So keeping the mobile QB setting on gives you more realism and see that time it worked and he caught it but the point is that those things matter those settings are a big deal so what you're going to want to do and i can go i can actually go into a uh and just offense only and just show you let me pick somebody who who has actually a, a quick quicker quarterback and you can see the settings here real quick i'll show you if you go down to i think it's difficulty QB vision, it tells you right there what it means. So you really don't even need this video if you, if you guys read what this stuff means. But I think a lot of times, I think a lot of times people pick up the game and they just jump right in. They don't want to see settings. They don't want to go into the tutorial and that's what happens and they don't know what's going on. So I'm just making this as an extra, you know, information session for you guys. So mobile QB controls, it says it right here, controls with the human control quarterback gets possible accuracy penalty while moving during a pass. The penalty is much greater if you're throwing across your body. So if you want that turned off, good. If you want QB vision turned off and you want to see the entire field, no matter what quarterback you're playing with, you could do that as well. But we're going to go into the rosters. And so Arizona is a perfect example. So if we go into practice and we do offense and we look at Arizona, we can see that this guy's a mobile QB He's going to be able to throw on the run better, but it's still not guaranteed to throw a great pass. In addition, it's never guaranteed to throw a great pass because there's always going to be a small um, margin of error when you're throwing the ball where any QB can throw a duck. Any QB has a missed throw opportunity, so it's never going to be one and done perfect. But because we have a mobile QB, I have a greater chance of throwing... And the, that time I was throwing across my body right there and he threw it fine on the move. So when you're playing franchise mode and you're recruiting players, it is an advantage. If you're not the kind of person who's a pocket passer who can stand still, it's an advantage to, I'm gonna throw across my body again. See that time he did it fine again. It's a heavy, heavy, heavy advantage to not only have a high skill QB so you can see the entire field, but also a QB that is mobile so you can move. Because in this game, the, uh, the defense can get through your line pretty quick, especially when you're on the, the higher difficulty. So we're going to throw with our body, and he threw it pretty much fine. So mobile QBs, QB vision is super, super important. Make sure you guys take a look at that. Don't forget that that's in there. And that adds so much more strategy to how you're recruiting players, how you play the game. If you're not, I'm going to go ahead and just go back. If you're playing with a team, 
like we just were. Let's go back to Buffalo. If you're playing with a team that does not have a mobile QB, you're going to see the difference right here as we as we move along. Um, there's also parts about running. I know people have complained about running on the inside when you're playing as uh, AI versus AI, but even that is all dependent on your matchups. And we're going to get into this in a second, but one thing you need to remember, so take a note, when you set your difficulty settings, those only come into play when you're playing against a human ver versus the computer, or there's at least one human in the game. It could be human versus human or human versus computer. But if you're just playing AI versus AI or coach mode, I think it doesn't take into account the, the, uh, the difficulty. So what that means is people do complain about the running inside not being effective. But we're going to do some tests here. We're going to see the best running team versus the worst defense. And let's just see if anything changes. But before we do that, let's get back to what we were doing. So we're going to try to throw. This guy's a 70 sky, uh, 75 skill. He's not good. So if we go to the right and throw to the left, see, we th immediately throw a bad pass. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it right there so you can see that the mobile QB setting is super, super important. Now, let's find the best running back in the game and let's see what kind of, uh, so Beltran. So we're going to go ahead and play with the, the, the Detroit Tigers and we're going to play against Washington. I'm pretty sure Washington has a stout defensive line. Actually, no, we want the weakest defense. So let's go in here and let's just pick a defensive tackle. Let's pick a team that has a very bad. So these guys are not very good. So salamanders. So we're going to do right now. We're going to do a, a scrimmage of against those two teams. So we're going to pick Detroit against the salamanders. And let's just watch, I don't have it set to run every time, but let's just watch this for a few minutes and just do some commentating to see how these players are, are going. I don't have the sound on for the game, so let's turn it on before I forget. Um, but this guy's good. Number 47 is really good. And I don't know if they're going to run inside, outside, or run at all. But we're going to do some tests here. The only thing that's different about full scrimmage is that you don't have fatigue or stamina constraints. These guys can run forever and it's all because you're in practice mode. I mean, look at that line. They're all stars right there. And that was a good tackle. He chose to go to the outside. But people, a lot of people, not a lot, some people who are hardcore in this game, they complain about like the most like specific things like let's just say running inside like we're trying to say here or like certain blocking issues like you guys got to remember that it's just i'm just one guy working on the game and the game plays really really well over years and years of iterations this should be like a legend bowl three by now so keep in mind you're getting a game that's been developed for many many years to make the best product possible as one person and there are other AAA games that we know of that still don't get it right. And they have millions of dollars in resources. That's one thing. The other thing to remember is whenever we make a change to the blocking or the running, it might fix that one specific situation, that one scenario there, but it's not gonna, but then it's gonna break like 10 others. So keep that in mind. But if we watch this, like some people complain that this guy won't block the right guy, right? Cause he just backed away. He, he needs to run his route. So his route told him to go to the left and pull. But the thing about it is, I think as soon as my guy crosses the line is when he turns around, he'll get whoever's around him. But if I didn't do this, that pull, what happens is then when there is a play, when the play goes to the left this way, he's not going to pull. He's going to always go to this guy. So it's like you can, you, somebody might complain, go, oh, why didn't he block that guy? Well, because he's following the play. And you can't have it both ways. That's just not the way it works. 
So you got to keep in mind that blocking specifically and running is by far the most challenging thing out of anything I did in this game. And for anybody who wants things to work a certain way on a certain play at a certain time, you have to remember that this is not a one trick solution thing. This is like very, 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 very fragile, surgical. You do anything to it and you're bound to, uh, to have problems. I'm trying to see if they can pick. Maybe what we can do is we can go into coach mode. And that way we can pick the plays we want. That's probably a smarter way to do this. All right, so now we're in coach mode. I'm pretty sure that when you're in coach mode, it does not take into account the difficulty. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm not looking at the code. It's been a while since I've looked at it. So just um, let's assume that that's the case. Oh, I didn't control the team. I forgot all about that. That's my bad. So we need to do that. Salamanders, we should still be on coach mode. We are, it says it up in the top right in case anybody forgets when they make their changes. And let's pick some inside runs. I'm curious to see what happens. Like I said, it should not be taken into account difficulty. And by the way, these loading screens are helpful. So keep an eye on those. Um, if you watched the last video, the last Franchise Academy, the only thing I didn't talk about was facilities. They're pretty straightforward. They were in the game since the very beginning and early access. So I'll make a note now and I'll remind you guys, if you're playing franchise mode, buy some facilities and they're all different. Some change skills, morale, um, might give you more money, but you got to also watch out for risk because there could be a risk that you can get injured. I mean, things like that. So just keep an eye out, but it's, it's very simple. You make money, you spend money and you can sell your facilities, buy them. You only have so much space, so you can't just buy everything. You got to be mindful of your square footage. Um, so when you're buying things, let's do an inside run. Let's do one that has a little bit of blocking. Let's actually pick, well, let's just do inside run this way. Let's just find one that has some blocking. At least one guy helping you here. Um, I don't want to go I form. I'd like to go one where there's another guy helping you block, but then maybe you have like one receiver. I don't want pro set. Because pro set is... Let's just try like, I don't know. Let's just try one of these. Well, I don't like that because I want some receivers. I want it to be fine. Let's just do this. This is a harder one to probably pull off, but let's see how this goes. And trust me, running inside is not easy. It's not going to be easy. So I know that it's hard to do, but let's just keep picking the same play, see if we get any luck. This defense is, look, they're picking a run defense, so they're gonna come after me here. No matter what I do, they're coming at me strong. And, you know, he got a yard there, fine. Not a lot, I get it. But let's keep picking the same play and see if we can catch them with a more, this is more of a zone type of um, defense because they're not lined up. But see, that way he took a different route. I've been told, and I don't know this for sure, but I've been told that zones are easier to run against because man, I guess they're, um, they're matched up to each player. So maybe they get them faster that way. I don't know. Let's just keep this play for a few more times just to see what happens. He got stuck there. And, you know, yeah, you can sit there and try to do better AI and try to see if you can find a better way. But I spent a lot of time picking different um, pathfinding type of uh, algorithms. Running outside is always something that they do better. I get it. 
let's pick a different um let's pick a different run like an iso this might do even better just because now they are stacked up on the line so this is gonna be hard but see there's no receivers here maybe that might be part of the problem that we don't he got a couple yards but maybe that might be part of the problem because we don't really have any runs i can't see i don't want single pistol no empty no flex bone no i form no um this one might be good let's try this one okay this is good because we have at least now their defense is pretty stacked right now but we have at least a fullback blocking and as you can see there he busted it through the line now people complain that you can't run inside this is a perfect example that you can i mean watch the real nfl watch any football um games and you're gonna see that running inside is not easy it's just not easy so don't expect it to be perfect every time and, and this play seems to be working really well so if you're having a problem running inside pick this play but i know you can run inside when you have the right matchups when you pick um the right difficulty like if you're playing human and difficulty matters then pick a difficulty that helps you out because they're they they're totally different and this one is getting yards so i can already tell you that this is going to work and this is basically we're picking formation i form strong iso okay we have a really really good running back though so and a good line but it's still hard to run in the middle you know it's not going to give you great yardage every time and see that time he got stuck but what's the other alternative to getting stuck there you got to pick you got to pick which way you're going to go and in my case i'm picking to have collisions so that the guy just doesn't go right through and warp through people but for anybody who's on the fence for picking this game up this game's a lot of fun and i have a great time with it there's another run on the inside you know we can go back and look at the replay and just take a look at how that one unfolded and just kind of see um you know what happened there but it, it's a nice it's a nice looking play you know the line gets nice blocking holds the blocking the fullback picks up a guy i don't know why this guy that's my quarterback he stops right there he doesn't want to help block he's scared maybe i don't know but i guess he didn't have anybody close enough to block and this guy got through and remember the coolest thing about this that I always kind of chuckle at is this is AI. This isn't me running the ball. This is code looking on the field and he's saying, okay, wait a second. Where am I going to go? The blockers. Who am I going to block? You know, this guy right here got stuck and that's going to happen. You know, he, he got stuck behind the line. He's trying to get around and he couldn't get around. That might be something that we try to work on one day, but those pathfinding things are really, really, really hard to get right those two defenders they just they couldn't get around this guy so it works both ways like getting blocked is the same for both people this guy just can't warp through people so i don't see a problem with running anybody who complains about running look at this video and watch it ai versus ai if the ai can do it you can do it what else do we have here Oh, another thing that we can talk about. So when you're looking at the difficulty gameplay, I think, where is it? Right, difficult. So the kicking meter here, this is to see how fast the kicking goes back and forth, the arrow. You can tweak that on your own. You can make it faster or slower. But another thing that I don't know if people really get is when you're when you're the quarterback and we'll just pick this team. The pass meter, which I know people who are used to just pushing a button and letting it go, the pass meter, the speed of that is based on the difficulty you're on, the CPU difficulty, but more importantly, what your QB's rating is. So in this case, 
Let's see, what is what is the QB? Oh, I'm on coach mode still. Gotta turn that off. Let's just pick New England. But basically the skill of the quarterback, which is your throw accuracy, and we're gonna look right now and see what this person's skill is in the uh, depth chart. But he's an 83 skill. That's his throw accuracy. He's not that bad, but we're playing on superstar mode. Okay, so when you're on superstar mode, which is not the highest, but it's high enough, the meter's gonna fill up pretty quick. So if we look here, you, you, have, to, you have to time it based on the player you're playing. So if you're playing with a really, really bad QB, it's gonna fill up a lot faster than it would with somebody who's the top QB in the league, right? And so you have to get used to, and that's kind of what makes it fun for, for me is no matter what team you're playing with, no matter what player you're playing with, you're always going to have to figure out how do you play with that, with that player. For instance, I play a game called MotoGP. It's a motorcycle game, right? And let's pick, let's pick Jacksonville. I know they have a good quarterback and depending on whether you're running with a 250 CC, 500 CC bike, different bike engines perform differently. They, they just do. Every bike is different. So when you're on a motorcycle or a race car or any vehicle for, for that matter, you have to really understand how they accelerate, how they brake, how they turn, what's their handling like, you know, all that stuff matters. Now we got a better quarterback here and his power meter, you can just tell right there, it's slower. They're always going to increase speed as they go, but it's a slower, slower top rate of acceleration that you get with the, uh, with the meter. And I could probably throw better with this guy. You, you just got to get used to him. Now, if I go into here and I pick, um, 80, he's still pretty good, but he's not as good. Let's see if there's, I can feel a difference. I hope I can, should be able to, let's see. Yeah, I can already see it's faster. And that's something that you guys need to pay attention to. And like I said, I know a lot of people, they'll jump right in, they'll play the game, they'll have a horrible QB and they'll be like, oh, I hate the pass meter. I hate the pass meter. Well, you have to remember that it depends on what QB you're using. And I don't think that we have anything, I know people had asked many times to get rid of the pass meter. I don't think I ever got rid of it. I think that you can turn off, which I think this is kind of important to talk about now that we're talking through the uh, pass meter, but you can actually turn, you can actually like turn off the graphics. So there are some people that just, they can't get it out of their heads that the, that the, uh, that the pass meter exists. But if you think about it, the pass meter is no different than Madden or any other game. You hold it down longer to throw a bullet. You tap it to throw a loft. You can throw a lofted pass in this game with a little tap. If you do it too little, like if you're trying to escape a, a sack and you just tap it like that, you're gonna, you're gonna get some inaccuracy. But if you give it at least like 10% or more, you could throw a lofted pass all day long. And some people wanna play without it. I don't know how the hell they do that, but it's like I did it right there and I held it down a little longer. If you turn that off, it feels like there's no pass meter because it feels the same as any other game. If you want to tap it and do a lightweight um, loft, just let's loft it up to, to B. Oh, I threw it too early. And I probably held it for too long. Let's try that again. This will be a good one because they're going deep. Let's just... See, I can throw it as high as I want, loft it to him, and catch him right on the money. And that's a good quarterback. So he's going to put it there. Now you got to watch out for wind, but you can also turn off the power meter. So a lot of this game has been designed and upgraded based on player feedback, but it, you can only do so much. You can't please everybody. People don't like the, uh, people don't like the, the power meter. Turn it off. Learn to play without it. I don't know. But the problem with turning it off is if I hold it all the way down, I'm going to throw a duck because I held it too far down. But if I do that same play again, or 
I think it's the same play. No, different play. If I do, let's just say this play, and I want to throw to X, I can just hold it down for a little bit and he'll throw a bullet. So if the pass meter bothers you guys, turn it off. I think you're crazy. <laughs> I don't want it off. I want to know exactly where, you know, where the uh, pass is going, but playing with it right now, it doesn't feel that bad. Like I feel like I can actually play and not really worry about looking at the pass meter. So something to think about, if you guys want to try that, go ahead. Um, other than that, like if we want to look at defense real quick, one of the things I try to do, and I do it in my gameplay videos, so we probably don't really even need to go over it, but there's all different ways to play defense. And you can either be a lineman and try to break through the line by tapping the A button. And the faster you tap it, the more you can break through the, the, uh, the block. Let's just pick something here. So we're going to be... Let's be, uh, these guys are really not good, so, whoops. This guy's like the best one. So, you know, I just got thrown on my ass. They all did. They all just got, they all just got work. Look at those guys. Boom, boom, boom. So, anyways, you could tap A to on the xbox controller which is what i'm using here you could tap a to uh to smash through the line but you got to have a good player I mean, look at their line i'm playing against a stout line i also like to play with the uh the safeties here now that was a that was a nice move like that was a really really nice move he's gonna get a touchdown let's see that again the ai was smart enough to go in between my guys i mean that's a pretty sick Sick decision there. I like that a lot. So, anyways, the game is very deep. Keep in mind the player matchups, the player ratings, all that stuff matters. The difficulty settings, go through every setting. Every setting has a description of what you can, what, what they do. Take some time with the game. It's not a simple game. Take it easy. It's like getting a sophisticated piece of machinery. Read the manual. Take it slow. Try to figure some stuff out. If you want a quick game where you push a button and everything works fine, then this isn't the game for you. If you want a game that, and that's fine. That's not what I made it for. I made this game for people who want a hardcore experience and they can change the difficulty to make it easier. But at the, at the root of the game's design, it's meant for simulation, advanced users, people that want more depth, that want to be able to play the sport and uh, don't let the graphics fool you. This game has a lot in it. So until next time, I'll talk to you guys. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed these Academy videos and uh, we will catch you in the next one. Later.